Hey guys, this is Dan with Gears and Gadgets. Thanks for tuning in. So today, I need to do some wrenching on this bike. I uh, actually need to do uh, a wash too. Since I got back from California, uh, my bike has sat. Uh, I got my truck back from the collision shop and I had a ton of work to do and I've just been super busy, haven't had time to ride. So, a couple things that I wanted to do today. The ultra cool oil cooler on this bike, I retrofitted it up to uh, work around this engine guard that I put on. I'll link that video up above. And I noticed some kind of strange things happening on my way to and from California. And that is that when I sat on the bike, it was fine and temperatures were always okay. Um, that ultra cool oil cooler is awesome. I love it. But anytime I threw my leg up on the highway bar, or as I like to do as well, when I'm riding long distances, sometimes put my foot in the rear position, uh, the engine temp started to spike. And I could see that on the uh, dyno jet that I run here on the bike. I noticed here, let's see if you can see it on camera, maybe not. Temperature 277, it stays that way. But as soon as I move my feet to the rear pegs, the uh, temperature starts to spike quick. 279. 280, 282, 284, it was actually getting up over 300, I looked down and I'm like at the last gas stop, was th thinking something was wrong with the bike, uh, and then I just noticed when I put my, put my feet back down, now it's 288, Six. Two eighty four. It just starts to drop again. So it must be the way that your feet on the uh, footboards, with the uh, air coming across your legs, kind of channels air in uh, and over the motor. Now it's uh, two eighty two. So pretty, pretty interesting, interesting. It also looks like it goes up with my feet up on the uh, highway pegs. But as soon as I put my feet back on the foot pegs, or on the floorboards, it uh, starts to drop again. I don't know what that's all about. Let me know in the comments down below if you've seen that before. It's kind of new to me. The um, engine temp and head temp would just start to skyrocket. As soon as I put my foot back on the floorboard, engine temps would come back down. So I think what's happening here, uh, and I'm gonna have to test this, is remove the ultra cool oil cooler because I think it is actually preventing airflow from actually hitting the motor. Uh, when I put my feet up, I'm actually blocking off the airflow that's coming over top of the air-cooled motor. But when I put my leg back down, I think I'm actually re-channeling air back into uh, that, uh, that area, which then causes the temperatures to just drop rapidly, I mean, and really rapidly. So uh, also, uh, I, the reason why I think that is when I put my leg in the rear position, you would think this would open up all this area for airflow over the motor, uh, but I think it's just hitting the ultra cool and kind of coming around the bike as opposed to over the heads. So I'm gonna pull that off for now. And uh, one thing I do wanna make very clear, that ultra cool oil cooler works Awesome. I've never had any issues until this uh, engine guard came on here and I started retrofitting trying to make it work. And I think I just have too much going on in the front of the bike here that it's, it's got to come off. Uh, but I would recommend if you do have overheating issues and you don't have the engine guard uh, that you can run the ultra cool oil cooler. I've run it now for about uh, just about a year on this bike, 10,000 miles. Um, and this is the first time I ever noticed any issues and it was after I retrofitted everything. So um, again, I speak very highly of ultra cool oil coolers. Uh, I think they're awesome. It did incredible uh, things when I was riding in temperatures 115 plus. Um, it worked really, really well. So um, I am not saying not to buy an ultra cool oil cooler. I am just saying in this configuration, 
with everything retrofitted the way that it is that I cannot throw my feet up on the highway pegs. So um, I'm going to pull it off. Um, I also need to figure out how to get the uh, dead play here. My clutch is adjusted fine, but I have all this slop in the clutch cable I got to try to take up too. So we're going to do that as well. So let's go ahead and throw this thing up on a jack, get to work. Okay, so first, this is kind of what you see from the front of the bike here, if that helps put it into perspective. From this point where the airflow is, you can see it's kind of blocking a key area where the fins on the motor are. And prior to putting this engine guard on here, this was bent far more out this way and actually down a little bit. And I presume there was airflow getting between this gap here, which is really not happening anymore. So I think my modification to the oil cooler was a bit too much and I have to make a decision here, which is going to be keep the engine guard, lose the ultra cool oil cooler, rely on the OEM oil cooler. But as you guys know, if you've watched my older videos, this oil cooler here doesn't do a whole lot at slow speeds. And slow speeds are where I was having issues here in Arizona because I was hitting uh, traffic jams, uh, accidents, things like that, and uh, having to be at a dead stop and the bike idling for too long, that oil cooler uh, sitting up front doesn't do anything because there's no air flowing through it. So it works great at highway speeds, but not so much at slow speeds. Um, but it's so infrequent that um, I'll just have to deal with it if it comes up. Uh, luckily, I do have the uh, DinoJet PowerVision up on the bars here, which is nice. The uh, PowerVision provides all of the uh, engine temp, head temp, um, air intake temp, and uh, you know throttle position economy, all that stuff, which uh, that's just not really necessary, but it's on there, and then uh, battery volts. You can change these to whatever you want. This is just how I have mine configured, but it is nice to be able to monitor those temperatures when you are in a situation where um, you, know, you might be having some uh, overheating issues. So uh, again, that is just kind of the way that we're gonna have to run with this thing for now. So let's go ahead and we will start pulling her apart and uh, get that oil cooler off. Now, some people were watching my videos and saw that I put this spacer in here, which was aluminum, and that it's butted up against a steel frame and that the dissimilar metals uh, issue could become a problem with um, corrosion and that's not wrong however i did coat this block also always take my hat and throw it on there wow flex seal is no joke and there is no corrosion like it's only been on there for a month or so so i did not anticipate any sort of issues, uh, but it's not wrong. People are, you know, to say that it's a genuine concern, dissimilar metals, um, but again, no issues here. Next, to go ahead and pull off the oil cooler. Do have an oil pan down here to catch whatever might come falling out. Never fails, you always drop something in the oil pan. So I'll just disconnect these electrical connectors. And there, it is off. Now once I get these brackets off here, I'll be able to put the engine guard back in place so that that's not just floating around the fender. And get that button back up. And I have to say, the powder coat on the Harley is pretty darn good because that thing was clamped on this rail for over a year with all that vibration. And it's really not marred up all that much, so not too bad. So to make sure that my custom bolt that I made here isn't too long. Yes, it is. So we'll have to grind this down a little bit.
So now we're going to go and remove the rest of the oil cooler parts and pieces. Okay, so the oil cooler is now all removed. Now all that is left is to uh, remove the wiring, which should only take a few minutes. See if I can adjust this loose clutch cable somehow while I have it all apart. There we go. That ain't too bad. Uh, that's a much better clutch feel. Okay. Okay. It's all put back together. Let's get her washed up. Now stay tuned for the next video. Uh, I am going to go on a bit of a little uh, trip, uh, relatively in town here, but uh, a nice couple hour ride where I anticipate testing this to make sure that the overheating thing in leg positions is all resolved. I do believe this will solve the problem. So stay tuned for the next video. We'll be on the road testing this out, seeing how it goes. So thank you guys very much for tuning in. If this is your first time tuning in, please hit that subscribe button down below. Remember, likes go a long way to support the channel. See you guys next time.